Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Patricia Mona Intuitive Consulting. I have with me the lovely Susan Reynolds. Uh, for the month of October, we are doing our astrological and psychic predictions. Um, we do this every month and it is wonderful because I am a psychic medium and a remote viewer. And Susan does karmic astrology and just blows my mind with the knowledge and wisdom that she knows. And we don't compare notes or anything, but it's really neat to see that what I'm picking up psychically matches a lot with what the stars are saying, because I know nothing about the stars. So this month, let's get started. I'm going to go first, Susan, if that's okay. Um, just a, a quick recap, and I think that we should, we need to start doing that on, on these. We need to do a recap of the month and go, hey, I remember predicting this. I remember predicting this because one of the things that I do remember predicting last month was I said it felt like the gates of heaven was open. The gates were open and people were being called. People were going to be passing. And unfortunately, I did observe multiple, multiple uh, people passing this month. I knew eight people who passed and three pets so far who has passed in the month of September. And um, it's it's crazy to just look back and you know remind ourselves of of some of the things that we said. And so the other thing that I noticed <laughs> that the month of September. It did feel very chaotic. It felt heavy. It felt like there was a lot going on, uh, being pulled in a million different directions. And I'm sure humanity felt that as well because that is a collective energy, um, I think, that we were all dealing with. But October, to me, doesn't feel that, it doesn't feel that great either. But let me go back even a little further uh, further still from one of the predictions that I made because something really big happened here this past Friday, September 22nd, 2023, when the Canadian government invited President Zelensky to come and be a part of the House of Commons and the, the Prime Minister and the whole House of Commons stood up and honored this man that they called a war hero, his name is, hang on, I have it written down here, Yaroslav Hunka. Have you heard about what's going on with that yet? Oh my no, no, I haven't heard uh, that name. I, it, I know Zelensky has been in Canada in the House of Commons, that part I know about, but oh, this name I've never heard. You got to know what, what happened. So the Speaker of the House, I personally think it was our Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, because she's Ukrainian, and her grandfather actually served in the same division as this Yaroslav Hanka. So they thought that they were standing giving a standing ovation to a Ukrainian war hero. Some people started doing their Googling. He's actually a Nazi that served with mm -hmm. Hitler. And they honored an actual Nazi in the House of Commons on Friday. Now, this, it, it blows my mind. It is such a slap in the face um, to the Jewish community, to the Ukrainian community. But what's even worse um, is that Technically speaking, because the prime minister and everybody saying we didn't know, we didn't know. Well, I'm thinking, how are you not doing background checks no, no. on who you're inviting into the House of Commons, right? And if you're not doing background checks, how safe is a president who's a political target? He's literally got bounties on his head. How safe is he coming to our country, standing in the House of Commons? If no one knows who's actually there, I, th I call BS. I think that they knew exactly who this man was. Now, here's a prediction that I made in 2020, which is kind of ties in. Back in 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, when I felt the energy, I kept saying, I keep seeing a rise of Hitler's consciousness. I can feel Hitler's consciousness back on earth. Because you have to realize Hitler wasn't just a man. He was 
a paradigm. He was a consciousness that infected the minds of millions of people who thought it was okay to try and literally wipe out a whole race of people. Like who does that? And the torturous, murderous ways, like you read about it. And as an empath, it's like, it literally goes through me and I feel it. And it's like, I get flashes of their memories and it's crazy to think that that's a part of our human history. And Canada stood there and honored a Nazi. Well, back in 2020, I could feel, this was before the restrictions even. This was at the beginning of 2020, before March 13th or 14th even happened. I said, something's back. Hitler's consciousness is back. I kept dreaming about it. And what I saw was it looked like tentacles all over the earth is what I saw. And then COVID hit. And the other thing that I saw too, when I remote viewed the earth was I keep seeing all these satellites like an electric jail all around our planet. It literally looks like she's in jail from all of the satellites. They're all connected. These frequencies are not good that we are being bombarded with, right? And so I could feel the rise of that energy. And so it is, when you think of, you know, by the fall, or I know it was, it was March actually, that the restrictions came in. Two weeks to flatten the curve, two weeks to flatten the curve. Two weeks was two months, then two years. And then it was, if you don't take the government mandated what they believe you need to have in your body, you're not allowed to go out. And if you look in history, I didn't know this until all of this started coming up, um, was that the restrictions that we experienced in 2020 and 2021 were the beginning of World War II restrictions for the Jewish people. Oh. Yeah. They weren't allowed to go to the restaurants. They weren't allowed to go to the bars, to the pubs, to the they to the movie theaters. They weren't allowed to go to play sports. Then and it was slowly they brought this stuff in, just like they did with us. Slowly they brought it in. Because if they would have hit us with it all at once, no one would have complied. And there's a lot more of us than there are of them. So they need to convince us along the way, just like they did the Germans and the soldiers who thought it was okay to do this. It comes in slowly, it leaks, the evil leaks in slowly, right? So I felt that energy coming back. And I look back and see what COVID did and what it brought in on a global scale. That was a spiritual war. That was the beginning of a massive spiritual war that was beginning to infect the minds of everyone who thought it was you versus me, us versus them. And that's what this paradigm right now is trying to do, is trying to convince us you're bad, I'm good. It's you versus me. Think about it, everything, right, right down to your sexuality they're exploiting, you know? Who cares? Live and let live for Pete's sake, right? So it's always a day. It's a day. <gasps> it's the Jews. It's the immigrants. It's the blacks. It's the Hispanics. Yes. It's the trans. It's, there's always a they. Yes. Yeah. And that's they're the ones who are responsible for all your problems. If they were gone, you'd be happy. They. Yes. So in this day and age, I truly believe that humanity has moved past that. It's the governments that keep bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. Right. I do believe that that humanity at the core of our being we are good people i do believe that goodness still does live within each and every one of us you know it's just it's the choices that we're making that we were that people are being forced to make all of a sudden when they're not being then they've never experienced that before and then they get angry and then it's you versus me and you know what i mean so it's just it's it's crazy to see that i called it Hitler's consciousness. And now it's literally in my country, in our face, being honored. And it was so unbelievably wrong on so many levels, but here's the crazy thing. So people are doing digging. And anyone watching this, I really want you to go do your own homework and um, then 
you'll be able to see the connections that I've been shown. And it's not just me, like people have literally done the homework on this. Um, so Christia Freeland, her grandfather, Christia Freeland is our deputy prime minister. If something happened to Trudeau, I believe she's second in line and that's even worse. That's even worse. She comes from a line of Nazis. Her grandfather served in the same S S, where is it? The 14th Waffen Galatia, it's called. Um, and her uncle actually wrote a book about the grandfather's experience as a Nazi. So the, her grandfather was a, a Nazi collaborator, like there's, and it's in the Ukrainian archival records in Winnipeg. If anybody's looking and wants to do their own homework on the connections there. So I do believe that this woman, um, absolutely knew who she was inviting and who the Speaker of the House was inviting into um, into Parliament, especially with Zelensky. Now, here's the other thing. Trudeau has come out and said, we have given $9.4 billion to the Ukraine and we will continue to support them. Here's the problem with that. He just gave Russia a smoking gun by doing what they did because Russia, <laughs> Has but said he Zelensky he Trudeau yeah, in Canada Trudeau 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 and our Parliament by honoring this Nazi he just proved what Russia was saying that the Ukraine is full of Nazis he keeps saying Putin keeps saying he's out there to denazify the Ukraine and that it's money laundering and it's uh, and now here's my thing nine point four billion dollars of our tax payer dollars it's not his it doesn't belong to the government it belongs to me and every single canadian who is working their butt off to pay for a war that we disagree with right 9.4 billion dollars where right now uh, a loaf of bread is six bucks right we're it's not good up here there is no place to rent nothing to buy he is the groceries are through the roof. The bills are through the roof. Tons of people lost their jobs. Our people are suffering. There are still First Nations that don't have clean drinking water. And that was on what he preached that he would do if he ever got into power. That's the first thing that he would do. Well, he didn't do it. Like he has, the, our prime minister has literally dug Canada into such an embarrassing hole that it just, I'm just, I'm floored with it. And I think that Canadians um, need to be aware of this because they're already trying to silence the media on this. And that's why it doesn't surprise me that you haven't heard, because this is huge. This is like historically huge. This isn't little, this is massive. So here's what else is happening. Like Trudeau is such an idiot. Poland is already starting the process to extradite this 98 year old Yaroslav Hunka, who's been living his pretty little life, probably since he was 35 here in Canada. And they're now extraditing him and trying him on war crimes. Like this is, Good. Huge. This is huge. Like, God, yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean, you know? And it's funny how truth always has a way of coming to the surface. Karma always comes back. And I really, really hope they do try him in, in a tribunal criminal court of law. Like he never should have got, none of them should have gotten away. Yeah, they never should. I don't, I'm trying to think what I'm picking up about this. I'm more an astrologer than the kind of work that you do, but I'm glad they're extraditing him because that's the right thing to do. I don't know that he'll live to see. I agree with you. The courtroom. You. But I'm still glad they're doing it because they're going through the motions to say, no, this was wrong. Yeah. We're correcting this. It's the right thing to do. I'm, I'm glad about that. I don't think it'll actually come down into the courtroom because I think he will pass away before I that. I but absolutely agree. With I'm you. still on Poland's side. I'm still glad. Yeah, they're doing it. yeah me too. It's like, wow, wow wow it like i said it's it's just it's something historical that's going on here and um 
I think that there is, there's more of that uncovering energy. So the reason why I'm bringing this into October is there is more of that unearthing energy, things coming to the surface in people's lives. Now, if there's one piece of advice that I got to give everybody in the month of October, stay in your own lane, stay in your own lane. Don't be picking fights or arguments with anybody. Don't, this is not the month to, you know, sign anything big or make any really big decisions or, you know, because things can be explosive very quickly. It, it literally feels like it can go from zero to 90 very, very quick. And it's just the energy. It's not, it's, yeah, it's just, it's in the air. And so I'm sure if you're watching this, you'll know what I'm talking about or feel it if you do. Um, yeah, stay in your own lane. And the other thing too, I've been finding myself wearing a lot more black lately. And normally I wear whites and blues and pinks and, you know, the lighter colors. And I just want to say black does serve a purpose. It really does. It's a grounding color. It's a protective color. Um, it's a camouflage color. It's a don't necessarily, don't want you to necessarily see me color, right? It's a protective color. And I have found myself naturally um, in the last week, I want to say, um, needing to wear black to just ground myself and have that little bit of layer of protection. Um, so if you are sensitive to energy and you do need a layer of protection on you, use color therapy. If you need to feel lighter and 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 want to feel more airy, wear your whites, wear your blues, you know, um, the light pinks, things like that. Don't put your whites away just because it's fall. I don't. I wear white all year round um, because I I base what I wear on how I feel. And I know that there's a lot of people out there like that. So use that as as something as a you know something to kind of lift your energy um even crystals bring out the crystals bring out the prayers this is the month where it just feels like we need to delve back into ourselves get into that little bit of protective mode you know hermit mode i guess is a little bit better way of saying it you'll want to feel like you want to just stay in and enjoy a cozy fire and a cup of tea and a good book that's this is the time to do it that is called staying in your own lane just don't be causing trouble with anybody you know don't be breaking any laws because you will get caught it just feels that's a better way to say it. it feels like what goes around is coming around so fast that it's keep your nose clean right now stay in that state of grace practice forgiveness practice the whole ho -ho -ho pono pono you know because it does it just feels like um this is the time to kind of do that so i think i'm let me just see let me make sure i'm done my rant um okay okay i think i'm done my rant <laughs> well when it comes it's no surprise to me that i agree with the things you're saying, I come at it from a different viewpoint. This year, 2023, and going into 2024, these are very explosive years. Uh -huh. You know, so we've got you know another 15, 16 months of explosiveness. Next year, as well as this year, this is when we are transitioning into a new vibration globally. And there is a conflict and I'll talk more about this in January. Every January, I do my predictions talk, and I'll be talking about this because it's such a big deal for everybody, regardless of where you're at. We are moving out of the old traditional model of government, which is a bunch of old white men telling us what we're supposed to do. I, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean that these are the people who have owned power in my country, in your country, in the world, you know, and this is changing. And so what we are going to see in these this year, next year, the year after these next few years is this morphing into something new. But we are going to see this last grasp of this old autocratic fascist like government not want to give up the power. Mm -hmm. We're in charge. We're going to be in charge. And so there's going to be more conflict. There's going to be more of what you were just talking about. There's going to be, you're going to see this everywhere. We've seen it in the United States. Certainly I've seen it in Israel going on. We're going to see it in all these countries. The people 
are going to start rising up. We're going to see more demonstrations. We're going to see more letters to the editor. We're going to see people sort of almost wake up and say, wait a minute, what are you doing? What has happened to our government? That's not representing me. It's almost like everybody all over the country is waking up. All over the world is waking up. I remember a couple of years ago, and I'm and I said honestly, I'm ashamed to admit this, but I read or somebody was telling me about a perk that people in the Congress in the United States government have for their children, and that the children of House of Representatives and Senators serving in our government get a free college education, paid for. Thank you. Oh. That's what I had a month phase. I was like, what the blank any blank. Yeah, that's not cool. And I was so angry. I don't know why this particular thing just enraged me. But I guess part of my anger was at me. Because I was saying, how did I not know this? Why was I not paying attention? Yeah. How did all of this just slide right in? What was I doing? Because when you're in a democracy, when you're in a republic, it requires something of the citizens. And all over the world, for decades, we have had citizens sort of, I won't say be sheep, but be quiet, you know, like, oh, well, they know what they're doing, or my life is going along. This is all changing. We're but, starting to see people wake up and starting to see people say, no, I don't like that. Oh, We're transitioning from age to youth. I wanted to say, I have totally forgot to mention that. There's information coming up about Biden and his son. You watch. There's corruption there big time. And I think that the truths that were spoken about them in, in 2020, there is going to be charges. I, I The Bidens are going to be in a lot of trouble. So no, you're right. gonna I say. Think there's going to be a lot coming out. And of course, it's right around election time. So I know they're making it into the drama that it is. But I, the, I think that the general public is going to be shocked at what comes out. Just say that. I'm not getting that. I think there are going to be charges against Hunter Biden. I agree with you 100 percent on that. But, but I don't see on charges that. against his father. I don't. I don't get it. I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying I don't get it. I don't see it. I don't feel it. Wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. You know, I do think next year is going to be a roller coaster for the United States. I don't think Canada is going to be as agitated as our country, but all countries. We're going to start seeing this. You're going to hear in your country, in Canada, in the United States, a lot more about the youth vote, a lot more about getting the youth out, a lot more about who is the youth voting for, because this is part of the new vibration and the new energy that we are moving into. We are starting to see the world in different ways and to different degrees wake up and demand change. Because our nation, the United States, is not the only one that has adopted a long-term policy of rob the poor to give to the rich. Yeah. And we are going to see the poor and the middle class go, oh, man, it's heck, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot more involvement in government. We're going to see a lot more demands for change, demands for growth, demands for equality. Now, we know that the world is not equal. You know, there you go. The world just is not, you know, but we're going to see demands for it to improve at every nation on every level. We're going to see more demands for honesty, for truth, for accountability, for, you know, why aren't you showing us your tax returns? What, how did you make your money? What are we doing about this? I see it happening a lot in government, but I'm not limiting it to government. We are going to see this with big business big businesses in Canada, the United States, England, Europe, you know, I know there's all this um, sort of dark energy around some of the German firms around having all of this slave labor in World War II from German prisoners. We're going to start seeing what's been underneath come to the light, especially starting in October, because October is the kickoff for eclipse season. We have two eclipses in October. Wow. We have a solar eclipse. Oh, no wonder I'm feeling that energy rising. Uh. It's oh. not that oh. eclipse is not bad, but it is unsettling. It is unsettling. When are they? Uh, what what are the dates for them? There is a solar eclipse on October 14th. Okay. And that is in the sign of Libra. And then there is the second lunar eclipse 
on October 28th. And that is in the sign. I think that's in Taurus. Yeah, that's in Taurus. Um, astrologists have a saying that eclipses reveal rather than hide. When we are in eclipse energy, we tend to see things that were buried come up to the light. So now this can be on a personal level, on a professional level, on a political level, economic level. I'm not limiting this in any way because there's so much going on in your government and so much going on in my government. I definitely see more secrets coming to light, more things that were underneath, more things that were buried. And yes, I see people going, huh, what? you can do that i don't know you can do this isn't that illegal you know like we're gonna see more things coming out i don't know about you in canada with all the things that have been going on in my country politically i talk to a lot of clients and they're like i can't watch the news anymore i can't deal with this anymore i say all the time it's like my whole country has ptsd like we just every time it's like whack-a-mole that that game's like every time we put our heads up boom we get whacked with something else until we just go i can't deal with this anymore it's not that citizens don't care it's that they're getting numb they can't take anymore too much i agree yeah too I much watching they're, it in 2020 i can't do yeah. it they can't do this anymore they're just wiped out I wish there was some sort of national counseling for all these countries to counsel the citizens and how to get past PTSD because this is not stopping. In some ways, this is going to increase, not decrease. It is because it is transition energy. But I'm going to tell you something that I get all the time that I'm excited about, and it's very positive. Everything I think about and see, I keep hearing the light wins. The light wins. The higher energies, the light energy wins. We mm -hmm. move into the light. But because there's so much conflict, don't think that the old way is going to go away quietly. We are going to see, just like you're talking about, we are going to see old ways of authoritative government and fascist ideas slip in and slip in in a way that is very attractive. Like, oh, we'll take care of this. Oh, we'll make your life better. Oh, yeah, we agree with you 100%. So we as citizens of any country have to be a little bit more diligent. Like you just said, here, look this up. Here, do your research. We just can't listen to the sound bite out of one side of our ear and say that's what the truth is. We're going to have to dig a little bit because we're in information overload. And as we next year are moving more into Aquarius energies, I hate to say it, but we're moving into more information overload, not less. Yeah. And, you know, I'm much older than you. And I'm of an age where we didn't grow. I didn't grow up with a computer or a cell phone or an iPad or, you know gps you wrote down your instructions turn left at the you know big tree so there's a lot of changes happening very quickly and that sometimes gives nations and citizens almost like whiplash like they just can't keep up like i don't want to hear anymore you know that i really struggle with technology and sometimes i'm like just stop i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> you know i kept my dial phone well into the oh, 90s wow. I still have my dial phone you know? yes i remember those so i'm not a big technology fan but we're going to start to see this take off especially next year now, i'll talk more about this in january when i do my predictions talk but we're going to start to see some of it now september has been so especially difficult because everything was just locked up you know right now in september we had mercury retrograde we had Jupiter retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Pluto retrograde. Nothing is moving. And everywhere I turn with friends, relatives, clients, I keep hearing about how tough September has been. Yeah. We're just talking about, I can't believe eight people yeah, died. So a lot of people have really been struggling with September because when none of the planets are moving, the energy gets heavier. We, oh. even if nothing seems to be happening that's wrong we feel depressed yeah I was gonna say and I and I'm hearing of a lot of cancer diagnoses as well that 
I'd I am not hear surprised. Feedback on that if, if they're in the same boat, if they've heard that in the past month of people's cancer diagnosis or or people or their pets dying, let me know because I want I I don't think I'm the only one because it felt like it was a wave of energy um, that was coming in. And you know what? And I gotta say this before I forget, because I will forget. Right. Um, the EBS system. So there's a lot of people talking about October 4th and the emergency alert or the emergency broadcast system that is happening all over the states. So where you are, it'll affect you. You'll see that and it's supposed to be on every single device, phone, computer, laptop, anything um, where it's, it does that test, right? Well, there's quite a few truthers out there that are saying some kind of weird things like um that it's going to turn on graphene oxide within people's bodies that the people who took the vaccine are going to go crazy like it's it's silly what they're what they're saying um now i don't believe any of that is going to happen i don't we've had them up here i think twice this year so far and we're not fried we're fine uh mind you i didn't take the jab but still people are fine but the thing is now yes that will be a lot of 5g radiation um you know emf coming off every device especially since it's all across the states in one big blast so if you're worried and you're sensitive to energy shield up meaning turn off unplug your devices um and you know, Defender Shield, DefenderShield.com. They have the greatest products for shielding. Like they've got jackets, they've got blankets, they've got gloves um, for when you're typing on your computer. My hands go numb when I type on my laptop. So I use those all the time. Um, they've got great stuff. So if you're worried about October 4th, they're also saying it's either October 4th or October 11th. So if you're worried, and it's supposed to be at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October 4th. Eastern Standard. Now, the interesting but, thing is on October 10th, devices. just turn off your devices. Like that's the, that's the only thing we can do. Why live in fear? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So if you're worried about it, turn off your devices, go that one step further, go get yourself some Faraday clothing and wrap yourself in it. Use your dial phone. <laughs> there you go. Use your dial phone. Yes. <laughs> you can still talk to your person. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say October 10th. And the reason when I was meditating on October, I kept getting October 10th and October 15th. Now I understand why I would be getting October 10th because on October 10th, Pluto is turning direct. It has been retrograde for months and October 10th, it is starting to move direct once again. Right. And Pluto is a plan of power, oh. intensity, and is a plan of secrets what is done underneath, what is hidden from view, it rules the underworld and the mob and organized crime, things that you don't bring up to the light of day. Mm -hmm. And so we've got two eclipses plus Pluto going direct. So I think there can be a lot of information coming at us or things we're realizing or seeing or things happening or moving forward that catch us by surprise that we are sort of struggling to deal with. Like he said, what? She did what? You know, kind of thing. Uh -huh. This is going to happen in our personal life as well as in our professional life. Now, right now, Pluto is still in Capricorn. So you can Google your sign and you can like ask what house will will Cap is over Capricorn. Okay. You know, so if you're a cancer like me, Capricorn's going to be opposite in your seventh house. But you can Google this and find out for all 12 signs. Not difficult to find out. It's free. And you can look at that because on October 10th, there's going to be like an influx of energy in that area of your life. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It just means it's a powerful thing. Yes. So I want you to be ready for this. Be grounded. Just like what you said, stay in your lane. Know what you're doing. Don't let people sort of throw you off track. Like, yeah. oh, we have to do this right now. Stop and reflect. Mm -hmm. Don't be pushed into something that doesn't feel right for you. But we're also going to have shortly after that on the 14th, we have our first eclipse, our solar eclipse in Libra. Libra is about partnerships. And so, of course, 
this is our romantic partnership, our spouse, our, our live in love, our, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, who puts the stars in our eyes kind of thing. But there are also business partnerships. You know, that is covered by Libra. People sometimes forget about that. But business partnerships are very Libra ruled. And think about the partnerships between you and your, your business, you and your company. If you work for a Fortune 500, when you signed on with them, you partnered with them. There's an agreement between, I'm going to give you this much work and you're going to give me this much money. That's yeah. a partnership, a contract between you. So on a personal level, but as well as on other levels, that's going to be a powerful time. That is going to be a time when you may impulsively take action. I would advise against doing that, but that is totally up to you. I picked up the same thing. Be careful. Yeah, taking an impulsive action in the middle of an eclipse is probably not your wisest course of action. I'll just put it like that, but totally up to you. We can get pushed to certain things. We can discover certain things. Sometimes that's information from without, but lots of times it's an aha moment within ourselves. Oh, that's why I keep dating bad boys. Or, oh, this is why I keep getting betrayed by friends because friendship is another kind of partnership. So we can have a part of ourselves revealed to us with this eclipse energy in October. Not only that, the second eclipse, the lunar eclipse, that happens right at the tail end of the month on the 28th, and that's in Taurus. Taurus is, is a lovely, lovely sign. You know, it's it's steady, it's reliable, it's stubborn. <laughs> I know none of you Tauruses would consider yourself stubborn at all, I know. <laughs> but it's very grounded. But Taurus also has a very strong tone and vibration around money. We may see some things come up financially for us on our personal life at the end of the month, uh, end of October, since we're filming this a little bit before October, the end of October. This may be where you start to realize, you know what, I don't think this job is paying me enough. What am I going to do about college for the kids or retirement? We start to think about our financial goals. If you were involved in the spiritual life in any way, this can be especially challenging. Because I don't know how to put this. It's I've had to deal with this. I think Patricia, you hands this a little bit better than I do. But I'm constantly walking that line between doing my spiritual work and making a living. It's like, you know, I have to buy groceries. I have to put gas in the car. The grocery store does not want a reading. They want their money, you know. So I have to charge for what I do. On the other hand, this is my calling. This is my life's work. I don't want to put this out of the realm of people being able to have this. So it's for me, it's a delicate balancing act. And I think that's true of a lot of people working in this yeah. area. Yeah. What do I give to the divine? And what do I need for myself in the physical world? How much is enough? I was doing a reading once, lovely woman. She's a billionaire with a B. Like, wow. And lovely, lovely woman. And she was talking to me. And she was talking to me about the difficulty she was having getting the bank to finance this big company she wanted to put forward. And I was talking to her about timing and things like that. And I got home and I started laughing. I said, oh my God, she sounds just like a client at a much lower level complaining because the bank will give them a car loan. Yeah. You know, it's the same energy. Yeah. It's you can have a billion and you're still mad at the bank because they won't give you what you need. Yes. So I think we're all going to start to look at how much money motivates us. What do we need? How much is enough? And that's an answer that sometimes is embarrassing. We don't want to admit that we really want to be a millionaire or a billionaire. It doesn't sound very spiritual. So, but it's a time for honesty and to look at that. Yeah. As we're looking at that issue in October in our own personal life, be prepared to see this in your city, in your province, in your government. Yeah. We may start to hear governments, because remember when I'm talking about something happening, it's happening globally. It's happening yes. everywhere in the sky, not just for Canada, the US or North America. So we may hear governments talk about needing to raise interest rates or needing to change the money. I keep getting, and you're more the psychic than I am, but I keep getting visions of like a new monetary system that we're going to be pushed, coaxed, 
manipulated into and I don't like it. It doesn't feel good to me. Mm. You know, I don't know if you're seeing this in Canada, but in the United States, there are businesses now that refuse to accept cash. They just don't accept cash. But then I've also heard, like, I think it was last weekend where Moneris went down, where all the banks went down. And it's like, that's so dangerous with cyber attacks and everything like that, you know? Um, and yes, I agree with you. I absolutely believe that they're trying to bring in the digital dollar that will absolutely be tied to your name, your carbon footprint, your dental records, your healthcare card, your driver's license, your criminal record, all of that will eventually be in the microchip. That's biblical. That's Mark of the Beast stuff. It really is. And I hate to say it, but if it's not in my lifetime, it's in my children's lifetime for sure. And so I've got to, I prepare them. I prepare them what to look for. Anything that looks even remotely like the Mark of the Beast. Yeah, we're not having it. Not today, Satan. Not in this body. Not in this lifetime. Not within me. But that's what they're pushing for. This isn't, we're not going to see this in October. But little <laughs> by little, we're going to see references to this. We're yes. going to see oh, this is great. This is much better for you over years, over years. Yeah, so it's nothing to, to, you know, I get hope all it's not in my lifetime, but right. <laughs> look at how fast, look at how fast, um, this, the technological revolution is moving though. It's crazy. I will tell you years ago, a friend of mine, because I was a Girl Scout. I don't know if you have Girl Scouts in Canada, yeah, the yeah, United States have Girl Scouts. Brownies, I think it's called here. Yeah. And so um, my friend was the troop leader for her daughter's troop. And yeah. she asked me to come and talk to her little troop because they needed to talk to somebody who was a Girl Scout years ago. Didn't make me feel old at all. You know, So I went to talk to these little, I don't know, eight and nine year olds. And they're asking me questions, you know, about what it was like to be a Girl Scout and how have things changed. And, and they said, well, how have things changed in terms of learning in school now for us that you didn't have? And I said, well, we didn't have computers when I was growing up to help us with our homework. These kids looked at me, so help me, like I told them we didn't have fire. You know, they looked at me with this look of shock. <laughs> One little girl asked, how did you do your homework <laughs> with pencil and paper? Yeah, that was it. They were done with me. You know, I belonged in the stone age and that's in my lifetime. That was not that long ago. Now we can't imagine life without cell phones and computers, yeah. but I didn't grow up with them. So as you said, we're going to see more and more and more very quick technological changes mm -hmm. that in some ways, it's going to be hard for the average person to keep up with because Aquarius, the new energy that we're moving into globally, it rules technology. Uh, it rules computers. It rules the space program. It wow. rules IT things. So we're going to see major advancements coming in in these next few years. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those advancements I'm going to be excited about. I think that scientific advancement is really going to help with diseases and diagnostic things and new imaging things. But is all of it going to be great? Probably not. It's like anything else. We're going to pick and choose what works for us. So what I like about moving into October is that every month between now and the end of 2023, we have another planet go direct, another planet go direct. So it's like every month, another layer lifts. So October is going to be a little bit better than September. As I said to you a little while ago, eh, that bar set kind of low. So I don't know how great October is going to be. But then in November, we have Saturn turning direct. Then in December, we have Jupiter turning direct and Neptune turning direct. So every month, these planets little by little start to move forward again. And it's like a, a log jam breaking open things start to move again a little bit. We start to feel like we could take a deep breath again. We yeah. don't feel as, as weighed down with this heavy energy. You know, I just have been so lethargic. I don't want to do anything. And I and I think a lot of people are feeling that, you know, yeah. they, they just want to sit, leave me alone. I don't want to do anything. There's no energy available to do it. You know? So little by little, we get that back. We get our energy back. So start to plan at the beginning of October. 
start to say, what do you want to do October, November, December, January? Because little by little, it gets better and better. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to start taking those baby steps for moving forward. Good. So I'm excited about that. I'm also going to say we start to move in next month into scorpionic energies. And the sun moves into Scorpio on the 24th, I think, of October. Um, Mars moves into Scorpio. I think it's on the 13th of October. And Scorpio is the sign of secrets. Oh. So we have eclipses that unveil things. And we have all this energy that is all about secrets. Well, we can already see that in the Canadian government the secrets coming out. So I, and I do, I feel like more is going to be revealed over these next coming weeks. So interesting that the stars even see it too. And the stars see it. So these can be secrets in our government. They can be secrets in our family, secrets at our business company, secrets within ourselves. Most of us have some secrets, some things you might not like to show up on the six o'clock news. Yeah. What kind of secrets do you have? This is about our privacy. So we may see things show up out in the world about privacy versus public stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, right now in the United States, our television shows and government's consumed with all the stuff going on with the presidential election next year. And Trump is the front runner and, and it's one bombshell after another. I mean, how is he running? Like, I don't understand what, what's happening there. So he hasn't been found guilty of anything, right? Not yet, because the trials have not taken place. But if the trials yeah. take place before the election, he can't be in the election, right? Actually, there's nothing in the Constitution that says he can't. Oh, really? I know. Oh, that's this interesting. Is, this is why this is so crazy oh. and unprecedented. It's just never happened. It's like days before. of our lives down there. You just sit back and, and watch it. You know, it's literally like a... It's like a cowboy in the, in the, in the front lines. It's just crazy. Yeah. That's why things are so wild now. It's like, what happens? There is something in our constitution that says if anyone is found guilty yeah. of seditious conspiracy, which is against the government, like being an insurrectionist, trying to overthrow the government, then they're not eligible to run for president. That's why they're trying to go after him with that angle. He has not been charged with seditious conspiracy. Oh. Oh. That is a thing I don't understand been because to... I clearly think he was trying to overturn our government and stay in power, yet he has not been charged with that yet. That's why he... it's so crazy. What was he charged with? He has been charged four times, he, meaning he's been indicted four times in four different jurisdictions. He has been indicted in Washington, D.C. for crimes of attempting to overthrow the government. Um, on January 6th. That's he the has seditious thing, right? Isn't that the seditious He's thing? been charged with other charges around that, but not that specific charge. Mm -hmm. No, he has not been charged with that. I will say yet, because the prosecutors can charge him with that at any time they want to, but that has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. So he is still eligible to run for president. He okay. has been charged in Georgia um, with in election interference, which is a felony because Georgia is a swing state in, in the United States, meaning it can go Democrat or it can go Republican. The Democrats won it by a fairly narrow margin. And so Donald Trump called the Secretary of State and said, you need to find us 11,790 votes, like very specific, because I think he lost by 11,789. Yeah, so yeah. you need to find us one more vote. And the Secretary of State was like, Mr. President, these are the results. I'm sorry you don't like them, yeah. but no, I can't find 11,000 more votes for you. Yeah. The conversation was recorded. Mm -hmm. And what Trump did was against the law. That's called election interference. So he's been charged with election interference in Georgia. See, um, crimes around January 6th, financial crimes. This is something else. He's, his real estate empire in New York has been charged with financial fraud. And the documents that they have put forward are that he has wildly inflated the value of certain properties oh. so that he could get bank loans and then wildly deflated them for tax purposes. 
would so help. if he wants a loan, the property is worth three hundred dollars, uh, three hundred million dollars. If he has to pay taxes, it's worth fifty million dollars. See, I got to give it to the states because you guys at least have the balls to do something like that. Canadians, they're terrible. So our prime minister actually interfered in a court case uh, with SCN Lavalin. It was a big thing out here where he called up the judge and was basically interfering, basically asking her to throw it out or do whatever. And she called him out on it and said, um, excuse me, you're they not know. allowed to interfere in this. Uh, but he had ties into that company. Um, I can't remember the whole story, but it was like, it was terrible. He should have been charged. He should have been forced to resign at the at minimum, but he should have been charged because that's a big deal interfering like, no, no. in a case <laughs> like that, right? Calling up the judge and going, I need you to do this. And then do you want to know what's even worse? He fired her. <gasps> he no. fired her. Fired her. Yeah. She was one of the Supreme Court judges and he fired her. See, it. this is what we're seeing. The old versus Get away the with it. Isn't that the, insane? Yes. So the new wants to be honest and upfront and fair and equal. And the old guard is like, no, we're in power. We're staying in power. So we're going to see these conflicts play out everywhere. Crazy. Next year, Trump has a trial in January, a trial in February, a trial in March, a trial in May. When is yeah. the election? The election is in November. Okay, watch. Watch all the charges get dropped right after November. It's literally just for votes. I honestly, I I, I kind of think it's going to be as soon as If Biden gets in again, they'll, they'll try. Biden's going to win. Trump is going to be convicted. He, right now, he's facing 91 felony counts. I do not intuitively believe he is going to be found guilty of all of them. But I do believe he is going to be found guilty of a large number of them. You think he's going and to jail? Then all hell is going to break loose because I don't know what our government is going to do. We have never had a candidate, Republican or Democrat, that have been found guilty of crimes running for president. I don't know. It's it's like the Wild West in this country. I don't it know really what's is. going on. It's, it's pretty crazy. It is really and crazy. Our country is realizing that it needs laws to protect us from this. Like we don't have laws that say you can't be a convicted felon and run for president because it's but never Here's happened. the problem. They're all corrupt because Biden and his son with Burisma and then also getting that Ukrainian um, solicitor fired, like um, that he's, he's just as corrupt. He, he bragged about it on national TV that he was like, if you don't drop this, if you don't do whatever it was, you're not getting the, the $50 million or whatever that was pledged to the Ukraine. Well, lo and behold. That's actually Trump who did that. No. That. no I'll send you the Trump video. Called, okay, I guess Trump video. from Biden. It's both Biden. Of it's Biden. I'm getting it from all sides. Yeah. Um, so, it, but yeah. that's what I mean. So, it's it's oh it's definitely Biden. He's he's as corrupt as his son is. I promise you, he is. He is. He totally is. And I know that you're Democrat. That's what I love about us. I love that we can talk and listen and have a and have that difference of opinion. Yeah. Because but I look at both of them and they're all. I look at both of them too. Like Trump is. I used to live in New York with Trump, so I saw his business practices before yeah. he ever he decided. He would drive to the little guys out of business, and like, and yeah. I, I, he's not a good man. So, so this is what we're looking at in all kinds of governments. Yeah. In addition to just Canada and the U S we're seeing this in England. We're seeing yes. this with resentment against King Charles. Well, you're so old and what are you doing there? And just, you know, abdicate in favor of your son. And we want new blood. We're, you know, it's not limited to our nation over here on this I, side of the pond. Yes. We're going to see this everywhere. We're even going to see this even more. In the countries that are most, uh, I don't know, locked down or restrictive or authoritative, we're going to see this in China. We're going to see this in Russia. Yeah. I think we're going to see demonstrations in Russia. Yeah. I think we're going to see people marching, even at the risk of imprisonment or whatever they do. We're going to start to see this. It's it's not all one month or all one moment, but this is a global change and shift in the energies. 
So we're seeing a lot of things slowly start to open. But as they start to open, it's almost like we get depressed. Like you're looking at how could the prime minister do that? That's against the law. I'm looking at what the heck is going on in my country? You know, yeah. so we can get more depressed. We can say, oh, what's the use? And oh, this is just the way it's always been. And the little guy doesn't have any power. Don't fall into that trap yeah. because this is, we're seeing it because things are changing. Because look at us, we're both outraged. We are outraged at corruption. We yeah. are, I don't care who's doing it, I want them held accountable. I don't care what party you belong to, I want them held accountable. You have some proof, you take it into court and you lock them up, you know? Yeah. So we're gonna see this all over the world where people are demanding an end to getting away with this stuff because it comes at the expense of the citizens of the nation. And so in maybe third world countries, we're going to see this, you know, they're even more brazen than they are in our countries. You know? In our country, they at least try to hide it, you know? Yeah, that's in true. Third world countries, they're like, all right, I get $50 out of every dollar of humanitarian aid, you know, kind yeah. of thing. They're, they don't give a flip, you know, this is what we do. So we're going to see this and we're going to start to see the pushback. It's a good thing but it doesn't mean it might not get a little more discouraging first. It may seem a little darker in the beginning because it's all starting to come up, but ultimately it's a good thing. It's coming up so people can see this isn't working. We need to make some changes. We need to protect ourselves. We need to look at the citizens. And, and that's a gradual thing, but this is what's starting to happen. As well so, Yes. Truth has time. to be seen. Truth has to come, rise to the surface. So that's why I'm saying we got to stay in our own lane. <laughs> stay positive. <laughs> Meditate. Do what makes you happy. Garden, cook. You have friends over for dinner. Remember joy. Because yeah. when you yeah. listen to the news, it's corruption and it's violence and it's this one is against that one. And they call each other everything but a child of God. And, and this country is attacking that country. You don't hear the good stuff. Yeah. And so we have to make a point of remembering the good stuff, remembering the positive stuff, remembering to laugh, remembering the joy. You know, do a gratitude journal if you want to, or take some time to just look at your family, your kids, your home, all the positives that we take for granted every day yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Those are things that we now have an opportunity since it's a little quieter and yeah, we need to stay in our lane to, to honor. And that's a good thing. The new energies are coming in. This between now and the end of the year, it's a transition period. It is a transition period. Yes. I agree. And we need to look at it that way. Don't try to push too hard. Listen within. Mm -hmm. There was something. Oh, as I was talking to you, I start to see something that's going to start coming up more next year. And I don't know why this came into my head. I started thinking about telepathy. Uh -huh. Are you thinking about doing any classes on telepathy? I think the military not just our military, but military regimes all over the world are going to start investing money and energy and time into telepathy. Like, I think that's the next big thing. And they need to. We need to get back to that because I truly believe that's one of the, the biggest ways that we used to communicate, um, you know, especially across the world because we are, we're all connected and it's a frequency and when you know the frequency of the person that you're looking for, that you want to communicate with, you can literally send them thoughts and it will imprint. And yeah, it's the coolest thing. And love is a frequency carrier. I've noticed that a lot of people who are deeply in love or know each other really, really, really well, you know, um, they'll be able to get that message very, very easily. So, you know, but we th think about it, it's, it's, it's when, you know, someone pops into our mind and then they call or we bump in, we think of someone and then we bump into them, that there is a signal that is taking place. I truly believe you're picking up on their field. So. Absolutely. I think what we do is going to start to gain a lot more respect mm -hmm. because we're going to see people want to do that. 
and then I think we're going to see classes on Facebook and YouTube about how to do that. I think we're going to say see the military, or that might be some of the secrets that come up. Oh, the military has been doing this for years, or I, I think people are going to start to say, oh, they're not so woo woo and out there, you know? Nice, yeah. About and, time, and rightfully so. It's about time, you know, that it is accepted. We are spirit residing in a body and the quicker people realize that that we all can walk through walls and we don't need to be dead in order to do it um you know the more yeah i i think that uh, society is ready to know the truth of who we actually are so wow I, think, I don't know what you're doing next year but it feels as if you start to do some sort of class some sort of weekend, some sort of something where whoosh, I see like a mushroom, like it it gets very big or bigger than you expected, or maybe you have to limit it in some way. Like, okay, I wasn't expecting that many people. You know, well, I actually, it's funny you say that because I do have, I'm doing two retreats next year, both in Sedona, where I take a group of people and we go meditate in all the vortexes. I teach them how to do this stuff. I teach them remote viewing and psychic connection, telepathy. I teach them all that stuff. Um, and literally I put my one first one is in March from March, I think 17th to the 22nd. I put it up for sale. It sold out in a day, in a day, in a day, in a day. So my next one, I haven't announced yet. I figure I'll, it, it's in September of next year. That's a long time, that's a year. So I'll start advertising that probably in January and I already have a wait list for it. So if everybody on the wait list signs up, I'm already half full. So if anybody is interested in my retreats, the minute you see it advertised, um, definitely get on there and reserve a spot because at space is limited i can only have 22 people with me on that on that retreat um but it is five star accommodations beautiful um hot tub pool everything and it's just us just us on the property uh right in the heart of cathedral rock which is one of the big vortexes there so you're literally sleeping in a vortex it's the coolest thing in the world oh, i wish i could go uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll be doing that twice next year. Um, and I know that I will just mention I do have a, a journey into the Akashic Records guided meditation that I will be doing online. Um, that is in October and I should have written it down. I think it's October 11th or maybe October 6th, something like that. Look on my website, www.patriciamona.com. But that one is amazing because I teach you guys literally how I lead you into the Akashic Records to go down the aisle and literally find your book and teach you how to read it. It's the coolest thing. So if you're into and you like guided meditations, definitely sign up for that one on my website. Doesn't matter where you are in the world and you will get a recorded copy of the meditation um, within 24 hours after it's finished. I always do that. I always send out copies of my classes when I do them online. You do too, right? You do. I do. Um, I'm doing a, a just a talk on the 15th of October mm -hmm. where I'm calling it life on the other side. What happens when we die? And I'm not a professional medium like you. I'm only doing this because my guides almost tapped me on the Susan. You need to talk about this. And I was like, no, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously ready or you wouldn't have gotten the little tap. But I have never had my life get better by not listening to my guys. I'll put it like that. Yeah, At so this stage of life, that. I suck it up and I listen to, okay, if you want me to talk about that. Um, so how I do people sign up for it? Um, You can do that on my website, uh, exploreastrology.com. I'm doing that. It's, you know, it's very inexpensive. It's, it's just a, an hour's talk about that journey that happens. And how do we help our loved one pass? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in situations where my loved one was having a hard time letting go. Even after we reassure them that it's okay and all the rest. I think as our populations across the world are aging, more and more people are running into this. How do I help them? And so many times people will just be devastated. Oh my God, I just left him for a moment to get a bite to eat, or I went home to change my clothes. They feel guilty. They feel like they failed their, their loved one and they didn't. That's oh, what they needed. Baby. So I think there's all misconceptions there. And that's why my guides wanted me to, to talk about it. So 
Um, and you're we'll right. see what I, happens. <laughs> I, I was a palliative oncology nurse for 13 years before okay, I Okay, so you know. Yeah, like honest to God, you'll leave the room for 30 seconds and that's all they needed because they needed to be able to go on their own. You know, some people are very private like that. And then there's others that need the whole family around and they literally will wait, wait until that loved one walks in the door and then five minutes later they're gone. It's literally like they were just waiting to see them. And uh, so yeah, each each departure is different, but it's a beautiful process. Like I don't, I honestly don't know why we're scared to die. I'm not, I'm certainly not. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm good when God wants to take me out I'm, I'm going home there's no arguing whatsoever for me because I know where I'm going but I think that I think that humanity they, they're lacking the faith and that connection to know where they're going they don't know where their eternal home is and I think that that's what it, it leads them in that state of fear right it's like well where am I going where am I going I know where I'm going I know who speaks through me. I know who I work for. I know within every shadow of a, within every inch of me, I know who I am, why I'm here and where I'm going when I'm dead. So I'm, I'm good. Don't cry for me. <laughs> I'll be happy dancing on the other side. I always said, I just want to wake up dead. You know, it's like, That's what you do you though. Sleep, you do. You make your transition. Boom. Oh, okay. I'm on the other side. I'm good. <laughs> I hear you. Me too. That's exactly how I would like to go. I don't uh, know if you run into this, but every time, and for me, I don't advertise as a medium. I don't work professionally this way, but when I do a reading, I open that door and sometimes a relative will come in. And the first question is always, are they okay? Yes. Is my loved one okay? That's the first thing I really want to know. Yeah. They're fine. They're fine. Yeah. <laughs> you are the one who's, who's grieving is having trouble they're okay yeah, yeah. so yeah. we'll see we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens i just tell my guys i'll set it up you better do the work <laughs> you know kind of thing that's exactly what i do too there's not much preparation that goes into my classes i, I usually channel them on all i all my meditations are channeled i don't i don't do scripts or anything like that it's just whatever spirit wants me to say that night and the energy that that wants to flow through me so and that's the best way to do it. I, you get the best information because it's not you. It's just coming through you, not from you. Exactly. Absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you, Susan. This so much. Fun. Thank you. Thanks for listening to my rant and for everybody else who listened to my Trudeau rant and, and what to look for. Um, this is fun. This is really, really fun. We just always, we just let it go where it's going to go. We never have an agenda except oh. to talk about the next month and broad terms and Sometimes we go down some odd highways and byways, but it's fun. Oh, and I, and I love it. I love, uh, I love that we can talk about the all of it. You know what I mean? Regardless, regardless of what political stance you take or I stance or even on the vaccine or not. Well, you're not either, but we're on the same page as that. But I'm just saying, I love that we can discuss that. That's the way it should be. That's the way it, it should be, you know? So yeah, I, I, I love that we can this. Yeah. Because I respect you and I listen to what you're saying. It may not be something I'm getting now, but I'm not discounting it. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to think about that because I respect the person telling me that. It's not black and white or either or. It's no, like, it's oh, okay, not. let's listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Well, okay. I love you, honey. <laughs> And um, yeah, I guess we will see you then in November. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? We set our nope. websites. We got everything, I think, right? I am good. Okay. We will, Patricia and I will come together at the end of October to talk about November. Yes. And then we'll see what's going on that month. Perfect. And um, let me know what you guys think about what we discussed and what I said. Put it in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys um, have to say. And if you haven't liked and subscribed already, um, I feel really geeky saying this, but please like and subscribe. <laughs> it helps the algorithms. It helps the word get out um, and reaches more people. So thank you. God bless. And we will see you in November. I'll see you next month. Bye. Okay, guys. Bye.